check it out. 4x4 four four light came on. We flipped it into high, and our light isn't on. In troubleshooting this, here are some components we're going to look at. The solenoids on the passenger side firewall, the actuator, which is near the axle near the front of the truck, and the vacuum reservoir, which is beside the battery. You're getting down underneath now. We've got the front of this up on uh, stands. Um, right back here. Okay, let's take a closer look. A little plastic cover. Three 10 millimeter fasteners. Quickly taking them off. Uh, there's a second one. There's a third one kind of up and to the right here behind a bar. And uh, take that off with a wrench. Then we can pull it down. There's the actuator. There's a diaphragm over there on the left. It goes left or right depending on where the vacuum is coming from. A pintle in between and an actuating lever on the right. The two um, vacuum lines on top. The one on the left from the four wheel drive solenoid blue and the light orange colored one coming from the one on the right side which is two wheel drive. Now we're down at the actuator checking the other end of those lines we just looked at. There's the blue one, four wheel drive solenoid on the left, and there's the orange one, the two wheel drive solenoid on the right. Okay with the truck in park we're going to throw it into four wheel drive. We've got the front end up but it doesn't have to be. And then we'll look for action on this uh, this actuator. Right now it's in the two-wheel drive position. Um, and when it trips into four-wheel drive, it'll move to the left. Okay, it's in two-wheel drive when it's to the right. Um, now I'm putting it in four-wheel drive. Should go left. Back to two-wheel drive. Back to four-wheel drive. And back to two. Okay, so we flipped it into four-wheel drive twice and absolutely nothing is happening down here. So now we're going to go upstream and have a look at those two um, solenoids. Okay, we're going to check for vacuum first on these guys. And um, first, we got, let's get these plugs out of the way. Um, just push them down, wiggle them out. Push them down, wiggle them out. And just pull these out. They're going to be in here pretty good. Okay, this lower one is where the vacuum comes in. This is the input, basically, right here. And this one is the output from this solenoid when it gets turned on by the control unit. Um, and there should be vacuum here all the time on both of these. So there's the other one. Um, so we're going to run the truck, start the truck up, and now feel for vacuum. Okay, now I'm putting my finger over this lower one. I know the truck's making noise. And I'm feeling nothing here at all. So we don't have any vacuum coming in, no supply. Now we're going to have to backtrack on these vacuum lines and find out where that's coming from and, and what happened here. Okay, so the white and black tubing is coming off going in this direction, coming from this direction. Let's go back and find out where this tubing comes from. Okay, we're going to get at this area back in here. It's like a little container, box, whatever. Uh, the battery's in the way, so out that comes. 8 millimeter on this. Okay, so here apparently is this vacuum box, whatever you want to call it. It snaps in to the battery box. It holds the battery. So it's going to have to come out. And there's four bolts. Like we're hooked on here. 
I'm going to get this battery box out of the way. Let's just get a little frying tool in there. And that's what I used. So what this thing is, is like two separate boxes. On the top here, you've got a line coming in, running back to a vacuum junction back here. On the bottom, these are the ones we're concerned with. There are three lines, the white and black that are coming from the, uh, up here from the solenoids, and then there's a red, which is a supply line. It actually comes back here. See this red one right here? So that's a supply, vacuum supply line. And then this box in turn is really two boxes. This one is handling uh, the rest of the vacuum in the car, whereas this box basically deals with the, strictly with the uh, four-wheel drive uh, vacuum solenoids. So what we need to do is test this, figure out where our problem is. And what I think I'm going to do is put the battery back in here, just set it down on here without the box, and then we can move these up here out of the way and test them, and see if the vacuum is, see where it is and where it isn't. Okay, so in preparation for checking this out before I run the car, I want to be able to take this line off, so let's twist it a little bit. I'm going to break the seal, and let's work it. Also, uh, another trick getting something like this out is a blow dryer. This will soften up the rubber. There it is. So I'll find out, I mean, if there's vacuum coming into this thing, and it's still not working, then we know we've got a crack separation in this box. Okay, so here we are. This line separated. As you can see, it's holding fast. We've got vacuum coming in. No vacuum coming out. Sometimes I need to temporarily hold something in place, such as this tubing. What I'm using here is a new product called a Daratai. And uh, what they're good for is for uh, temporarily holding something together, a couple pieces, whatever. I used it in the video to uh, keep a, a piece of tubing in place. Um, you can put them just through there for something light like that. But if you want it to really hold, put it through the second hole there, and then it'll really have some real holding power. So what I'm going to do here is just see if we can detect any leaks in here. So get a little a little soapy, soapy water, putting a Q-tip on the seam here. And then I've got a little compressed air source here. So I'm going to just put a stick a little in there and look for bubbles. So we're not picking up any leaks here. What I decided to do though is just throw a little bead of silicone on here on the seam on this entire piece. Since this um, part, this reservoir, um, is kind of implicated here, there was vacuum coming into it, nothing coming out, even though I could not find a leak in it. I'm going to seal this with some RTV uh, sealant, especially uh, the gap, there's a, t a bit of a gap right here, so I'm going to put some at least around this part. Okay, we're running it now with that vacuum reservoir box put back in. And we have a real good vacuum now. You know, even with the engine off, it's still holding a vacuum. And now it's working. Taking it out. Putting it back in. So we took it all apart, put it all back together. Miraculously, it now works. Okay, we're going to put this into a four-wheel drive now and yeah, start the truck and look and see if this actuator moves.
Okay, with the wheels off the ground, in park, in two-wheel drive, we're turning the wheel. Turn the right wheel, you can see the left wheel doesn't turn, and it turns very freely as well, so they aren't linked. So that's how you can tell it's two-wheel. Now I put it in four-wheel drive, and it's a whole different story. Now we can tell the wheels are linked because um, it's very hard to turn. I have to get two hands on this wheel in order to turn it. And uh, when I do so, we'll quickly scan pan over to the other wheel, and we can see that it's also turning. We're in four-wheel drive. Good to go. Thanks for watching.